Fedora 36 is out and it is packed with fantastic new features. We get the flashy new GNOME 42 with its new GTK4 apps and stunningly gorgeous dark mode. We get Linux kernel 5.17 which brings big improvements for AMD hardware. Then we get a set of updated apps that will be driving a fresh new experience for Fedora users. This update is a major one that will be supported for the next 13 months. I installed Fedora 36 as soon as it came out and I'm impressed with this release. The direction that Fedora is headed in, it's making Fedora the leading choice for a Linux distribution. So in this video, we'll be having a look at what's new, what's improved and what makes Fedora 36 a brilliant operating system for 2022. And I've got some compelling reasons that leave you beyond impressed. So let's jump right in. Starting off with the UI, we get the all new GNOME 42 in its stock form. And this looks absolutely gorgeous. While GNOME 40 brought us a complete redesign, GNOME 42 brings major polishing touches, UI improvements, as well as big under the hood updates. Firstly, we get a new shell theme that removes the rounded corners on the top bar and triangular anchors that connected these applets to the top panel. This change makes the desktop look modern and adds a premium touch. Then we get a new system-wide dark mode that is the highlight of GNOME 42 release. This completely redefines how your desktop looks and feels. On Fedora, the way this default wallpaper changes to its dark variant, this looks amazing. I just love this. All the applications here look very good in this dark mode and that attention to detail can be felt here. This is dark mode done properly on Linux. This doesn't force dark theming on third-party apps and break the look. Only apps that support dark mode are suggested to use the dark mode. At the moment, not all third-party apps support this but as they are updated, they'll get this soon. Then, we are introduced to the next generation of GTK apps here. GTK4 and libadvaita will be at the core of Linux app design henceforward. All GNOME apps have been updated with GTK4 and libadvaita here. libadvaita brings in a new feel and a new application styling trend to the apps and these apps definitely look better. The new interface style with these subtly rounded corners looks high quality. These GTK4 apps also bring in improved performance. Fedora 36 defaults to Noto fonts that improve how fonts look. I've never really liked how letters render on Fedora. When we compare it to Ubuntu, fonts on Fedora have been noticeably bad. So every time I install Fedora, I install a package called Better Fonts that noticeably improves how fonts render. You can check that out in this video of 20 things you must do after installing Fedora that make your Fedora experience so much better. I shared some really cool things like tips for speeding up your internet speed, performance, customization tips and so much more. So you might enjoy that video, link in the description. Anyway, this time the font rendering has improved with these Noto fonts, so that's a plus. Fedora 36 brings us a set of stunning dynamic wallpapers. These wallpapers dynamically change based on the display mode. I love everything about them. Overall, the user interface here looks amazing. I'm impressed with how beautiful the desktop looks in both light as well as dark modes. GNOME 42 is very modern and looks very polished. And the workflow here has gotten amazing with these horizontal workspaces and app grid. There's good news in the performance department too. Starting off, we get the Linux kernel 5.17 here. With it, we get the all new AMD P-State driver which supports Zen 2 architecture and above. Apparently, Valve has worked with AMD on the development of this driver as it is used in its Steam Deck. With P-State driver, you'll get improved battery life on laptops as there is monumental reduction in power saving state frequency and power consumption on AMD Zen 2 and ABBA hardware. You'll also be getting better performance on things like gaming. GTK 4.2 brings in a completely new rendering engine called the NGL Renderer which boosts app performance and frames per second and is also very efficient with power and CPU usage. So these newer apps will be more responsive. GNOME 42 also brings in improvements in input handling, resulting in lower input latency and improved responsiveness when the system is under load. This is particularly beneficial for gamers. Fedora 36 brings the latest drivers of all the GPUs so you'll be getting the best possible performance on your hardware. Fedora 36 is very responsive and fun to use. App switching, daily usage and even resource intensive tasks perform great here. Moving on to the software front, there are new things here too. First of all, most GNOME apps like GNOME Software, Clocks, Calendar, Calculator are all updated to GTK4. This gives them a refined new look and feel. The Settings app has also been updated. This brings us a sleeker control center with updated entries. 
appearance, applications, display, and a few other tabs here have changed a bit. Then we get a new default text editor for GNOME. Text editor replaces the old and trusty gedit. I really enjoyed using gedit, so I'm happy that the interface is very similar to it, but it definitely feels slicker. The new text editor comes with autosave, so that's progress. All these updated and new apps are written in GTK4. Then of course, we get a full update and refresh of packages in Fedora software repositories. This gives us access to an amazing library of well-tested and up-to-date software. Fedora is top grade in the software department. Fedora repositories are huge and contain a large number of packages. This software availability is enhanced significantly by third-party repositories like RPM Fusion. With RPM Fusion, we get access to virtually any software we can need. Then there's Flatpak. On Fedora, you can enable and install Flatpaks directly from the software store. Flatpaks bring you the latest and greatest of all the software as they are maintained by the software vendors themselves. The software availability on Fedora 36 is amazing as you get well tested as well as new versions of software here. Fedora 36 will be supported for the next 13 months. We'll be getting security and software updates on this version of Fedora till May of 2023. In the meantime, two more versions of Fedora will release. You'll be provided a one-click update option to upgrade your system to Fedora 37, 38 and so on. So basically, you can install Fedora now and keep updating and using the same system indefinitely. Every new version of Fedora brings the latest versions of all the packages. Now these packages undergo a thorough testing process to make sure everything works and all the packages coexist in harmony. Then, once a new version is released, these packages remain relatively stable while still receiving important updates. This model of software delivery is priceless. You are getting stable software but they are not painfully old. This makes Fedora great for students, software professionals, certain businesses and certain development environments. Talking about usability, Fedora is very easy to use as the user interface here is self-explanatory. Spend a few minutes on the system and you'll know where everything is, and the search itself is very powerful. You can search for apps, files, settings, and even software to install from here. This makes things very easy. So in terms of stability and usability, Fedora 36 is very good. Gaming on Fedora is a fantastic experience. Fedora brings you the latest Linux kernels and updated drivers while also making sure everything is stable and reliable. This forms the basis for Fedora to be a great platform for gaming. I'm currently playing The Witcher 3 on Fedora 36 and the experience is very good. Steam brings thousands of games to Linux and with its Proton feature, we can play thousands of Windows exclusive titles like GTA 5 and Cyberpunk 2077 on Linux. This works great and is very easy to install and get playing. You can install Steam by enabling its RPM Fusion repository from the GNOME software store. There are also amazing games like Zonotic and Zero AD available here for free from the store. Many of these games are loads of fun. Gaming on Fedora is vastly underrated because Fedora happens to be more of a professional Linux distribution. But I tell you, Fedora 36 is great for both casual gamers as well as gaming enthusiasts. Fedora is a true community driven project. Community is at the core of everything Fedora. From the design decisions to quality control, everything is done by a huge and passionate community. That is particularly why Fedora is such a high quality product. The Fedora community produces excellent documentation as well as how-to articles and troubleshooting guides when a new version of Fedora is released. This makes using Fedora very easy for both Linux newcomers as well as experienced Linux users. Installing drivers, getting help with hardware specific issues, help in general is available readily on the web. And this is a huge contributing factor in Fedora's success. Getting started with Fedora is very simple. You can either download the workstation ISO file and flash it onto a USB stick or use Fedora Media Writer. Fedora Media Writer is a small tool available for Windows and Mac OS. You download it, plug in a USB stick and run it. Fedora Media Writer will download Fedora and install the live version of it on your chosen USB stick and make it bootable. You can boot into a live session with it and give F36 a try and install it. Fedora is also available with alternate desktop environments like KDE Plasma, Cinnamon, XFCE and a few more choices. These are called spins of Fedora and can be downloaded from the link in the description. Fedora installation is very simple and beginner friendly. You can install it in 15-20 minutes. Fedora comes pre-installed with AMD and Intel integrated graphics drivers. 
For Nvidia, you need to manually install them from RPM Fusion. The command guide is linked in the description below. Fedora provides us with a high quality computing environment comprised of the latest features and tech and one that is also reliable. Every new iteration of Fedora is objectively better than the last version and Fedora works out of the box for almost everybody. It comes with a well-tested stock desktop without any additional theming, installs on BTR file system by default and comes with minimal apps installed out of the box. This is a very good starting point for everybody. Then. Fedora is backed by a strong community and a major tech corporation, Red Hat. And both these are incredible assets for Fedora. Fedora 36 is a fantastic release. Fedora has grown significantly in the last 6 iterations and has some amazing features. So definitely give it a try. Download links are given in the description below. Next, I highly recommend that you check out the 20 things that you must do after installing Fedora 36. They will take your Fedora experience to a whole new level. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, do consider hitting the subscribe button below. This is Linux Tech. see you in the next one.